I first met Marilyn Mosby at an event for the amazing group Black Girls Vote in Baltimore in 2014 with the late, great Representative Elijah Cummings. And then again, when I covered the Baltimore uprising in the wake of the police killing of Freddie Gray a year later. Now, I can recall thinking the state attorney's push to vigorously prosecute the officers who killed Freddie Gray was a bold move, particularly for a rather rare black state attorney. Police are rarely held to account in the deaths of unarmed people, particularly black people. And the police unions are powerful and their political influence is real. Those officers were eventually cleared by a judge's ruling. Mosby has taken other political risks during her tenure, moving to decriminalize sex work and marijuana, which particularly matters in a city like Baltimore, where poverty is high and the police community relationship is notoriously poor. So I will admit, I was surprised when attorney Mosby came back into the news cycle at very much the other end of the spectrum, accused by the Justice Department of financial crimes and facing up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Yes, I mean the same Justice Department that seems to be awfully slow when it comes to the former president, Donald Trump. So I asked if she would come on to the show to talk about it, and she and her attorney said yes. So joining me now is Marilyn Mosby, state's attorney for Baltimore City, and her attorney, A. Scott Bolden. Thank you both for being here. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank it. And I know this is, a, of course, is a high-pressure situation. You, there is a, an arraignment this Friday. Yeah, there's an arraignment this Friday, Joy. And uh, I mean, for you, who is somebody who has you know, devoted your life to you know, putting the bad guys in jail and fighting for criminal for justice, um, how does that feel to be in this position? It doesn't feel good. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, as I expected as a state's attorney that, you know, fighting for racial justice in the criminal justice system, fighting to end mass incarceration in a state where you have the largest sort of incarceration of black people in the entire nation, I understood that I was going to get pushback, but never did I or could I have ever imagined that I would be mocked, that I would be ridiculed, that I would receive hate mail, that I would receive death threats. They would describe how my husband would be killed coming out of my house and how no police officer would, officers would respond, how they would target my children, right? And I, I never expected the lawsuits and I never expected to be on this side of the fence where when the only thing that I'm attempting to do is to provide equal justice to all, regardless of race, sex, religion, and occupation. So, so let, let's do the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the charges. What you're accused of, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you buy a home, you can take money out of your 401k. Yep. Um, there are strict rules as to when you can do it to take money out early. Um, you are accused of taking money out of your 401k early to buy homes um, and, and not being honest about why, using the CARES Act, you know, which benefits people who are financially having financial issues, um, and then using um, sort of incorrect information about liens, um, not disclosing them, and using that to get loans. That's sort of just the summary of what you're accused of. So let me, How do you respond let me to just that? be clear, and I'll defer to my attorney on the specifics, mm -hmm. but this has been a long-term investigation that has gone through every aspect of my life. From my charitable donations to my tax returns, they have interviewed um, every p political do donator. They have gone to my hairdresser, my children's dance instructors. And this is ultimately they sent subpoenas to black churches throughout the city of Baltimore in an election year. I'm four months from my election. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and this is what they come back with me accessing my own personal funds that I put away every single week. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I, and again, I'll, I'll defer to my attorney, there's ulterior motives for something like this, for, for an attack like this. But well, when and you bring an indictment, if, you, if I may, when you bring an indictment four months before an election, when you don't sit down with the defense and tell them what you're looking for and what you're looking at before you bring the indictment, you're not trying to find justice or truth. You're trying to affect the outcome of her reelection effort. When you have a prosecutor like Leo Wise, who targets historically African-American elected officials, who gave two contributions, probably the only contributions he's ever given mm -hmm. to her opponents in her last election, and he leads this prosecution, it should have been a criminal, it started off as a criminal tax investigation, and now you have these charges that are not only false, 
but we've got exculpatory evidence to prove them wrong. So, so talk a little bit about that, because there, there are two prosecutors on. There's Leo Wise, who, to your point, is true. He has donated to your opponent uh, in, mm-hmm. in the past. There's a second prosecutor on who's a Democratic appointee, who's, who's not sort of in the Leo Wise sort of, you know, sort of mm-hmm. world. And what they're essentially saying is that, you know, these were kind of ill-gotten gains. Like they were used, that even though they were your money, that you're using your, your 401k money, that you violated the rules for how you could access it and didn't yeah, but there's no- tell about sort of things like tax liens and things but, you should have done. But there's not a, there's no objective standard for that. This is a subjective standard. Remember, this isn't PPP money. Okay. This is money, her own money in her 457B. And if there's anyone in America that wasn't financially impacted one way or the other by COVID, this COVID relief plan allowed her to take this money. That's the law, if you will. In regard to the homes that she bought, the mortgage applications, um, though we certainly, we were not aware, she was not aware of the tax lien at issue. And given the IRS and the un- understaffing and, and, and overwork issues we've seen, uh, we could have certainly shared that with the government. But this was a criminal tax investigation. And so, again, if you're not willing to talk with us, this is a sitting government official who every day wakes up to do law enforcement and enforce the law and protect the citizens of Baltimore. If you won't talk with her or her lawyers before you get an indictment, again, you're not really interested in justice. So are you saying that, you know, you attempted to talk with this prosecutor? Did you attempt to contact the prosecutor to explain what happened, to explain, like, how this money was acquired and you were rebuffed? Is that Absolutely. I can tell you that, that we have offered to... I have offered to go in front of the grand jury Mm -hmm. (laughs) for whatever they were coming at me with, and and they have rejected that. But this is more so about the fact that he wasn't able to do what he did in his donations, which was to support my opponents. And he's using this indictment four months before my election to have this cloud of aspersion over my head. And so I get it. Like, I have done things as a prosecutor that a lot of other prosecutors have not done in this country, whether that is holding police accountable when a lot of other prosecutors in this country would not do so, whether that is ending the war on drugs, which we know was a war on black people in the city of Baltimore, whether that is exonerating 12 innocent black men who the criminal justice system was willing and able to allow to rot for 300, cumulatively 300 years in jail for crimes they did not commit. Right? I've done things that would upset the status quo, but to understand and to recognize all that they've attempted to do, I've been mocked, I've been ridiculed, I've gotten hate mail, I've gotten death threats, I've, I've gotten it all. I've gotten lawsuits. OIG investigations, state ethics investigations. They've been coming for my law license since I charged those officers in Freddie Gray. They they literally kept an open and pending investigation against me for three years. And so I get it. But at the end of the day, what I hope most people in the city of Baltimore understand and recognize is that this is more about my election than anything else. And so... You know, and I guess that is the question, right? Because I think for a lot of people that are sort of looking at this case, they're sort of looking at the DOJ and saying, wait a minute, you know, you have Donald Trump with sort of decades and decades and decades of not paying taxes and uh, seeming to defraud insurance companies, et cetera. And there's been sort of no action. Mm -hmm. This was was this a publicly announced indictment? How public was it? Because I think that is the dichotomy. I think that the government released the indictment and to the press and to her lawyers. Mm -hmm. Uh, a week or so ago, and that's when we first got notice of it. As I said, normally you would have a meeting with the defense attorneys. But but let's talk about where we are right now. We're four months out from her election. Mm-hmm. We are ready for trial. The government should be ready for trial. We're certainly going to try to get the indictment dismissed, if you will. Mm-hmm. But we finally have an independent arbiter, an independent judge, federal judge, to look at everything that we've talked about, everything the government has done. We went to the Office of Professional Responsibility at DOJ. They said no. We went to the Criminal Tax Division of the of DOJ. They said no. And so now we have a federal judge who's going to take a and look so at this. The federal judge is going to look at the actual sort of allegations one by one. Is is your allegation... And the that, conduct of the government prosecutors. So you're doing both. I mean, yeah, exactly. is it an actual innocence claim saying I did not that you did not access this money, or is more the claim about the unfairness of the, of the It's certainly both. Is it both? It's both. It's sort of both and right? we lead with the motion to dismiss mm-hmm. the indictment based on bad faith and bad uh, conduct on the part of the uh, conflicts on the part of the government prosecutor, and and then secondly, we're ready for trial. We want to take this to, to trial within 60 days because Ms. Mosby is still running for re-election. And so let's find out. Let's find out what it's going to be. Let me, let me play a little bit of the announcement that you made. Um, you came out pretty, pretty forthrightly and stood in front of your workplace uh, and made an announcement. I'm going to play a little bit of it right now. Take a look.
I offered to prove my innocence by making myself available to present exculpatory evidence to the grand jury, but the U.S. attorney and the lead prosecutor in the case, who has donated to my political opponents and who has personal animus towards me, has refused to allow me to do so. Please don't be fooled. We are now five months from my next election, and this indictment is merely a political ploy by my political adversaries to unseat me. How, how long do you intend to fight this out? Like, what is your, is your, I mean, you're four months from an election. You're going to have to go through the process. You are running for re-election. I, let me just say one thing. I have fought Donald Trump, who said I needed to be prosecuted. I have fought against William Barr, who called me a rogue prosecutor. I have fought against my Republican governor, who doesn't agree with my policies. I know I've been through it all. I am built for this, Joy. And so I understand the shoulders that I stand on, and I'm ready to fight. I know I've done nothing wrong. So I'm ready to go to trial tomorrow. Put this on trial right now so I can prove my innocence. But let's get to the election, because I know th that's what this is all about. Thank you very much. Marilyn Mosby, um, attorney Marilyn Mosby, A. Scott Bolden. Thank you both. Really thank appreciate you, you thank coming you. forward. Thank and you, we will, we will keep, uh, keep an eye on what's going on as well on Friday. Thank you very much.